Oh, hey guys, I, I, here I was just playing my favorite song on the ukulele. Didn't even see you there. Hey, you know what? Why don't you join me? Yeah, let's sing it together. You ready? The quadratic formula's negative p. Mm. Do that again. The quadratic formula's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Man, isn't that awesome? We are getting so good at that. Just a way to remind you when you're doing your homework this week, if you look at one note, not only is there the other video where we play it re repetitively over and over and over again, we also actually have the recording for the quadratic formula song right there in the middle. So again, this formula is critical that we remember it and that we get real comfortable with it, okay? So, I mean, I just can't stress it enough. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If we can memorize song lyrics, certainly we could take a little bit of effort and memorize this. Let's see. I want to put that on a loop. That's what we want. Replay that on a loop forever. Okay. Today we are going to go through some homework questions and talk about how each of these is done and what are the big hiccups that come up along the way. Let me grab my board for writing and we'll just jump in and start doing these. And I'll try to keep that down just a little bit in the background. Let's go with a little color today, a little fun. We're going to take any of these problems. They're really all the same, and we're going to start solving. Let's take question number eight. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. If I want to solve equation 8 for b or p, or in this case we're just going to call it x, I have to remember that it's a times p squared, b times p, and c is my number at the end. As long as I follow that format, I'm going to be good. Starts with negative b. In this problem, negative 10 is b. So b is negative 10, and negative b would be a positive 10 plus or minus the square root. Now this is the critical piece. When you put b squared in, I can't stress enough, it needs to be calculated by hand. I'll show you on the calculator how it can give you the wrong answer if you don't type it in correctly. So I believe in doing this by hand. What is negative 10 times negative 10 or negative 10 squared? I know that that's 100. The calculator will mess that up if we don't type it right. It's better if we do it by hand. Minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which in this case is 24. All of that gets divided by 2 times a, which in this problem is 5. To finish this, I'm going to put all of the stuff that's inside the square root, we call that the discriminant, inside the calculator. And this is where I can show you about how bad it can get if we don't do this right. So if I take my calculator and I type 100 minus 4 times 5 times 24, I get negative 380. That is what goes inside of this square root, negative 380. Now, if instead I type negative 10 squared minus 4 times 5 times 24, I get negative 580. That is wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because the calculator assumes when you multiply negative 10 and you ask it to square it, it's taking the negative of 10 squared. It's not taking negative 10 times negative 10. So it gives us a negative 100 
when we normally would get a positive 100. The only way to fix this would be to put in parentheses around the negative 10 before the square. Then if I minus 4 times 5 times 24, it gives me the negative 380. I'm just a big proponent. You guys know how to square numbers, especially simple ones like 10. You should do that by hand. Okay, It will save you a lot of grief. Now, I'm not done yet. If the 380 divides by one of our perfect squares, this problem is going to go forward. So I, I'm not totally sure. Oops, I've got to have my 10 plus or minus. Now, this 380, it might divide by a couple of different roots. But for sure, there's a negative inside the square root, which means my answer will be imaginary. So I'm going to have two square roots. One of them is definitely negative. But now I've got to figure out, does 380 divide by numbers like 121 or 100 or 81? I'm just going to grab my calculator and start dividing it. So if I take 380 and I divide it by um, 8, 81, let's go back and do 81, I get 4.7. That, that's not right. I need a whole number. So 380 divided by uh, 64. 49. 64 doesn't work. 380 divided by 49. I really don't think some of these work. I kind of have a sense the more I do. 380 divided by, uh, we did 64. Um, that'd be 8 and 7. And 6 would be 36. Still doesn't work. 380 divided by the next one down would be 25. That would be like 350, 375. That doesn't work. So that takes me all the way down to 16. Doesn't work. Oh, that was supposed to be 380. Come on, 380 divided by 16. Still doesn't work. 380, oops, keep doing that. 380 divided by 9? I don't think so. And last but not least, sometimes it's best to try with the beginning. Divided by 4, 95. And that is our best option. So over here, I'm going to write negative 4 and then a 95. And this is all divided by 10. There's a lot of work to get to my final answer here, but I get 10 plus or minus. The square root of negative 4, okay, the 4 is a 2, but the negative makes it imaginary, so we're going to put an i. And we have root 95, but all that is divided by 10. Now, typically this would be it, but if I call this the triangle of power, or the big 3, if this number, this number, and this number all reduced by the same value, we can reduce one more time. All three of these do divide by 2, so I'm going to change them to 5 plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we'll just have i root 95 all over 10 divided by 2 is 5. And that is the final answer for question number 8. That's a doozy. The quadratic formula makes what would be otherwise an extremely difficult problem pretty straightforward to solve. I mean, really, a lot of it was, what can I do about reducing roots? That's really the, probably the biggest part there. Let's take a look at a couple more problems, make sure that we get through all this hullabaloo. Keep in mind, guys, that the answer key is attached here, so you can check your answers along the way. See if you're getting the same thing as me or as the textbook gets. And if you're not, jump on Teams and, and shout out at me and let me know what you need. Let's take a look at question number 14. You'll notice that on question 14, it's not equal to zero, which means this isn't solvable yet. We have to be equal to zero. So x squared plus 6x plus 15 would equal zero. We added the 15 over. So in this case, A would be 1, B would be a positive 6, and C would be 15. Well, the quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus the square root. Square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So in this problem, we start with negative B. That would be negative 6 plus or minus the square root. B squared would be 36. Again, do that by hand. Minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 15, 
all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So this becomes negative 6 plus or minus the square root of something over 2. I always put this discriminant into the calculator as one big calculation. So that would be 36 minus 4 times 1 times 15. That comes back as negative 24. Right here, I get a negative 24. And then the question comes, can this be reduced further? Well, negative 6 plus or minus 24 does divide by 4, which has a square root. And since it's negative, I'll put a negative 4 and a positive 6 all over 2. Well, I know the square root of 4 is 2, and because it's negative, I'm going to have negative 6 plus or minus 2i root 6 all over 2. Now remember, when we go to reduce, it's all about these three numbers. If they divide, we divide. And since those all divide by 2, we get negative 3 plus or minus i root 6. We divide those by 2. It would be over 1. I don't need to put it over 1. So that would be my final answer. Now, the next section, 22 through 30, are solvable by factoring or the quadratic formula. I don't care which method you use. If it makes you happy to try and use the factoring method, that's fine. If you'd rather solve by the quadratic formula, that's fine too. Let's take a look at question number 25 as an example of what I mean by that. S squared minus S minus 3 equals s. So first thing, i got to get it equal to 0. So I might as well minus an s, minus an s. That gives me s squared minus 2s minus 3 equals 0. That's my equation. If I were to factor it, it would factor as s and s. The factors of 3 that subtract to make 2 would be 3 and 1. To get a, a negative 3, I would have different signs. To get a minus 2 in the middle, I need minus 3 plus 1. This would mean that s could equal a positive 3 and a negative 1. Those are my actual answers. Now, because it's factorable, it will be clean when it comes out of the quadratic formula. Uh, so all of these are going to answer a little bit cleaner when we, we won't have these square roots in our answer, I guess is what I'm saying. Let's take this same equation right here and do it again, but using the quadratic formula. A would equal 1, B would equal negative 2, and C would equal negative 3. Quadratic formula is negative B. And since B is negative 2, it would be 2. Plus or minus the square root. B squared, negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is negative 3. All that divided by 2 times A, which is 1. This becomes 2 plus or minus. Now, if I put 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, I know this is going to come out as 16 all over 2. This is where it's unique because I know the square root of 16 is just 4. That would leave me with 2 plus or minus 4 all over 2. Again, we can reduce these 3 by 2, making it 1 plus or minus 2, all over 1. There's, there's nothing in the denominator anymore. And because there's no square root here, I should be able to finish the problem by adding 1 plus 2, which is 3, and 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Notice we got the exact same answers as when we had factored. Not every problem is factorable. But when they are factorable, yeah, they're a bit quicker than the quadratic formula, but not by much when you get better at using the quadratic formula. Um, let's take a look at uh, the last thing that you're going to be working with, which is dealing with the discriminant to know what kind of answers you're looking for. The reality is not every quadratic crosses the x-axis in a visible way. Sometimes it crosses twice and there would be two real solutions. Sometimes the vertex is where it touches the x-axis, and we would say that technically 
While there are two solutions, it's the same answer twice. So we would say that there's one real solution. Whereas here, there's two real solutions. I did a bad job of writing the word real. Okay, two real solutions. And occasionally, we get the problem where the answers aren't real. We can't see them, and this would be two imaginary solutions. But the question is, can we determine that without actually graphing them? Is there a way to just look at the quadratic formula and know what's about to happen? The answer is yes, and it's based around the square root. See, if the square root comes out as a positive number, we're going to get two real solutions. If, however, the square root has a negative in it, we know the answers will be imaginary. And if, this is the if case, we ever end up with the square root of 0. Let's imagine we had 3 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2. The square root of 0 is 0, which means 3 plus 0 is 3 over 2 would be one answer. And 3 minus 0 is still 3 over 2. Notice we get the same answer twice. If that's ever the case, we know we only have one solution. It's real, it's not imaginary, but there's only one solution. So let's take a quick look at one of these problems where we use the discriminant to determine the number and type of solutions without doing the whole problem. You know, if you knew you wanted a real solution and any imaginary solutions were just going to throw away anyway, for instance, if the answer was to a question about the altitude of an airplane, we would never talk about an altitude of an airplane being imaginary, so that would need to be a real number. And so if that's the case, you know, we would know real quickly, do we even use this equation as a good model for the, the height of an airplane? Let's take a look at uh, question number three. Our A is B, our A is 8, our B is 8, and our C is 3. So all we're going to worry about is the B squared minus 4AC part. That's what sits inside the square root. And if that's positive, we get two real solutions. If it's negative, we know we're going to get imaginaries, and there'll be two of them. And if it's ever 0, then that's a perfect balance, and we end up with one repeat solution. So let's plug these in. Mm, let's see, 8 squared would be 64 minus 4 times a is 8 times c is 3. So I'm just going to use my calculator to evaluate that. And we get 64 minus 4 times 8 times 3 is a negative 32. Now remember, this is what's inside the square root. That tells me, okay, so first find the discriminant. It's negative 32. That tells me I will have two imaginary solutions. If it had been positive, two real solutions. And if it was zero, one real solution. I hope that that really helps you understand how the quadratic formula is going to give us answers that are otherwise really complicated to find. I mean, if you look at some of the problems at the beginning of this, you don't want to do completing the square on a problem that has an odd middle term. And that happens often enough that it becomes a problem. But remember, you've got to be equal to 0. Use A, B, and C the way that they're written. And uh, shoot me a message in Teams. Let's, let's do that. Let's talk about the problems that don't work out right the first time. We'll see if we can get you cleaned up. All right? Good luck. Remember the song. We'll see you in class.